there, man, in the forest. It's a bizarre little patch out here. There's about literally half an acre of just all these stumps. Now, this is an area I was at a few years ago having a poke around and a lot of activity with, uh, you know, dirt bikes, people playing around with dirt bikes around here and a few random bits of stuff dumped here that were sort of intriguing, including a great big stash of 12 gauge shells that I almost ended up grabbing for the pure scrap metal value. I haven't been here in about two or three years and they've since dumped a whole stack of uh, dirt over there uh, for when they've been doing some road works quite obviously there's all bits of bitumen and crap all through it but uh, yeah, I'll see if you can find anything else interesting. There's the odd little wildflower out here, but grounds reasonably sparse. Oh, this one is. And there's another little one that's like a little blue one. And more timber over there. There's another little flare we've got. There's a orange one and there's also one that's like a blue. This is a blast, a big patch. I've got some of these at my house, but I've seen quite a big patch of these. Usually you just get one little plant, but lovely looking colour. Oh, no surprises here, the old tyre. But this is what happens to most propane tanks. They just get flung out in the forest. Because nobody knows what to do with them. All they know is that there's no real easy way to dispose of them. There is one place that deals with them, locally. But if you take a little barbecue bottle, I'm talking a little blimmin' 10 pan one. They want something like 25 bucks to dispose of it. And that's prices as of several years ago. And this got a little bit left in it. Yeah. I know all my taps and all my knobs on these. They have a magnet inside this, which mounts onto the other side of that and then moves this needle. This will come out and it'll be completely clean and clear. And you'll just have that bracket, but on the back of it, there'll be a magnet that adjusts that. That's your inline, 3 8 NPT. That's your line that goes to the front of your car. That's your overpressure line. If you filled it right up and there's a very hot day, the gas tries to expand and that's your overpressure line. There's a cover over here. When that expands, it goes out a pipe that's either hooked onto this side or on that side and out to the bottom of the car um, to let go of any of the gases. And I've been there when the forklift released one of those twice in the space of about 20 minutes because it was a hot day. I have little diddums over here springing around. I don't know why he's getting so close to me. Let's see if I can get this on. I should be blooming down this with gloves because it can get cold burns sometimes. I think it's jammed. Oh, stuff it. Anyway, yeah, uh, yeah. I don't think there's much in this one though. And we'll see. Well, it's barely anything, barely a cracker. A lot of this stuff's all made here. Actually, just about every single bit's made here. Um, that's just the way it is with these propane tanks. That's a very common mob. That red car I drive that I call the backup car, I'm pretty certain that's the uh, brand it has, the propane tank as well. Um, yeah. But I mean, right there, you know, another one of them. You got yourself a wood hot water system with a lot of welding. All that straight up. Undo that with pliers. Get all these out. And, um, yeah, basically, you can make yourself a wood heater with a couple of little legs on it. And it's very good quality steel, too. Um, so, yeah, no Chinese rubbish steel with uh, important things like this. And the worlds that they put on the end are absolutely flawless. They said we don't have guns in Australia. 
lucky people having a bit of fun with an old tin by the looks here. Exit because it's stretched outwards. And it will be entry because it's bent inwards on in the edges of the holes. I guarantee you that'd probably be a 12 gauge. On there is also exit because it's bent outwards. Should all be able to guess what that is, being out here. mention that but uh, get the odd native orchid here and uh, there's one I forget what it looks like I think it's a lot better than these though um, that is actually become extinct uh, and there was a whole mass of them not too far from where I lived and they were really fantastic looking you know that was something else and uh, they've since become extinct and they said even if there's only two or three in the wild, we've got the chance that we can hold them in the seed bank because this country has a seed bank and we can bring them back. But here's a bunch of others, I think, that haven't done anything this year, but, uh, yeah. Well, here's a real <laughs> freaky thing that's not what it seems. <gasps> Fruit. Oh, what is this? Oh, olive tree? No, it's a wattle tree. That's not fruit either. I just busted these open between a few rocks. And it's what commonly happens. It's a blooming bug attacking. I want see the bug... Gets its way in there somehow. And these are big bulbous heaps of crap that happen on this tree that I've seen of many of these trees. And uh, yeah, as expected, when broken open, you find a little worm in there. And that is just like a swelling of the tree, like a defense mechanism against this worm getting stuck into it. Um, you know, and presumably it might get stuck into a leaf bud or something like that and then uh, it turns like that instead. It really looks like an edible fruit, but it's not. And, uh, well, these have seed pods, and uh, seed pods are about that long with a whole bunch of little black seeds that are edible. And this is obviously not the pods it's supposed to have on there. I'll see if... I can't see any actual normal pods on it. I can tell you right now, that's not the right thing. There's a whole stack of flies under here. There's no shit, there's no nothing, but there's flies everywhere. It's the shade. It's trying to keep cool. You wouldn't believe it. I noticed that when I've walked past several shade areas. Nah, there's no pods on here, but... Yeah, it's just little abscesses, although you may be certain it's fruit, it's actually not. You can tell, because they're all blooming leaking sap and looking blooming black and a bit rough on it. and funny lines through them and blobs and stuff. Hmm.
Buddy. Hopefully wind isn't blowing the microphone, but uh, this is the uh, tree that I cut down last year and just forgot about. Uh, I still reckon I can knock that stump down a bit lower. What I showed you before was all these box thorns in here that are dead. And this one's tied on but a bit of wire. Uh, I thought I'd just come back because I thought I'd better show you. That's upside down there, but there we go. I believe it's a rabbit hole. And, uh, yeah. I may get him. One day when I can be bothered. We'll see. It's, uh, damn chains are all blunt. And, um, yeah. They either weren't sharpened very well initially, or they went blunt uh, down there with the um, post that I was cutting off because they went blunt very quickly, quicker than I expected. But anyway, I'll go and get those sharpened. I've got the two electric uh, chainsaw chains sharpened as well, which is good. So, hmm. The legacy of firewood never ends. I've got these two chainsaws, actually one I gave to my uncle, and uh, these are American built pieces of crap that are about Chinese quality, um, and well my one worked well, and I used it for about 12 hours, and now it rattles like hell, and I think it's seriously like the bearing's gone in it, or pistons cracked. The one I gave him, the fuel settings are wrong as in it'll only run in cold foggy weather but if it's a nice clear day it won't run uh, and the oiler doesn't work for the chain but all the same once upon a time I decided to try out said chainsaws and uh, cut off a few bits and yeah a lot of this sat in place after I cut it and didn't move and then it decided to come down on top of the box thorn later especially that big one going right along there um, but in case you don't know, this is a big line of rocks. Dum -ba -dum -ba -dum, and that's probably where the fence is going to go. All this has got to go, basically, including this one. I've got my thrills cutting down. And uh, I'm going to have to nip a bit of that. All said and done, what I'll probably do is just, when we work out where the fence goes, instead of going and cutting every flame an inch of this up, I'll just give it a lop. You know, like the old fences here. I just give it a bit of a lop a few feet that side and then just throw this backwards. And same with a lot of this stuff. And um, that's one of the ones there that never really got very big. A bit of a burn at the base there. And there's a whole stack of them that are only small like that. Uh, but I think... No, Mike, will cut that beforehand because he actually had a clothesline in here, would you believe it? Um, and well now the African box on has sort of sprung up and taken over but you could actually walk from the caravan which is just back in there right through over a little hump of uh, sandstones you got from somewhere um, and through into this area where he had a clothesline um, but yeah actually I don't know if the clothesline wasn't hooked on these trees but anyways <laughs> I'm sort of regretting the fact that I went and cut down uh, three of those cypress pines that are, uh, were standing up that I've now got the piles of logs for because now I realise I've got to cut this. Now I realise how much stuff that I've got, um, you know, that's been cut off the fence line. But realistically, those ones that I chopped down um, had reasonably thick, you know, trunks that were probably... Oh, at least a foot wide, and I sort of need that ability for the logs to burn all night long. Even though I've got too much wood, which has always been the case, I've never had enough big stuff that's about a foot in diameter, which this isn't quite, but some of the ones, well, that one there would be, uh, and the ones I've cut out where I pulled all the little box on out by hand, um, those ones are. And, you know, in some ways you sort of regret cutting that amount of wood, but in the other ways, I basically need, 
you know, one big log every night for three months of the winter so that I get at least a six-hour burn. And to achieve that, you've got to have the logs 12 to 14 inches in diameter um, to give you that slow burn that will go for, you know, six, seven, eight or more hours, you know, and uh, that's what I do have trouble getting. I never, ever have trouble getting stuff, you know, that's a few inches across. Um, I've got an absolute overload of that, but it's the big stuff that I need to burn all night long because the previous spring, um, <laughs> no, might have been the one before that, it was ridiculous. I only had smallish logs and they were burned out after four hours because I just plain ran out of big stuff. Uh, and I don't want to have to go through that again. It's, uh... Oh, this one might be alright too. Flaming hell, look at the size of that. And the foot of that. Yeah, look, that's about 11, 16 inches wide, that one. Uh, so parts of that will come in alright, even though. It often looks rough, and the borers sort of, like they get into it, but they only get into the upper half an inch or so. And then inside, she'll be pretty flaming good. You know, you see it's all crap there, and then the rest of that, you know, solid stuff. But uh, a lot of people don't like pine, but I'll tell you what, if you get a big enough lump, it doesn't matter. It still will burn for six or eight hours, uh, just so long as you've got that diameter. And then, of course, you need a wood stove big enough to fit in that diameter. Oh, you guess it, another burn stack. Instead of doing this, is it's... Uh, the clouds are coming over and it's getting dark and the crickets are starting to creak away there. Um, this is the water tree that come down um, basically beside my driveway. Uh, about, ooh, well, at least six months ago. I was going to offer to my father because he was, <laughs> he's been telling me, oh, you're throwing too much good wood into these burn heaps and all that, and, you know, if there's any as thick as your arm, then you should, uh, you know, I can use those during the autumn and whatnot. And I mean, this piece here is probably as thick as my arm, but then before you know it, it gets, you know, thin enough and, uh, you know... <laughs> And then he ended up uh, changing his mind about it and saying, oh, don't worry about it. And I'd been thinking, and I said, well, if you want wood, you can have this wattle, I told him, initially, you know. Um, and then he ended up saying, oh, there's no point to change his mind. Uh, and then I was thinking, and a day or two later, I said, well, you've got a stack of blooming red gum posts, like all these old ones that are coming out here. He fixed up some of his fence years ago and um, he's got a stack of these old posts still lying around from when he fixed up part of his fence on his dam bank. Then another bunch when he fixed up the boundary fence with his neighbour and then we, we do down the bottom of uh, his fence, like continuing on from my fence that I'm replacing, where it goes over the boundary into his place, uh, we're going to replace all that as well, and he's going to end up with a whole circus of these. And I said, oh, thank you, you know. <laughs> like, you've got enough of these that are going to be floating around. It's, it's not really worth me panicking, keeping little skinny stuff when you've got stuff that's, you know, basically, you know, like this sort of thing, you know, almost as thick as me hand sort of thing. And uh, he said, yeah, that is right, so, yeah. But anyway, uh, like I said before, I've got an absolute oversupply of uh, small wood, and I'm not going to keep small wood that's, uh, well, you know, basically going rotten, because there's no damn point, you know, because I've got stuff like that that's absolutely perfect. So, you know, yeah, it's a case of... The stuff that's not quite rotten yet, use that. The stuff that is rotten, throw it in a bonfire. And the stuff that's yet to rot, that'll be what we'll use in another couple of years. Um, so, yeah. It's getting pretty dark, but uh, 
I don't know if I showed this before, but this is the one that I've basically gave a bit of a blast to a couple of weeks ago, and oh crikey, it works. It works well. I mean, this thing's a decent size one too. It's oh up to the bottom in my rib cage height-wise. Like it's a pretty, it's not a big one, but it's not a small. Well, it's you know, it's not a tiddler either. You know, it's uh, the trunk on this I say would be. Oh, what have we got? Two bits about an inch, maybe a touch more for one of them. Um, down there, it's about an inch there. It's a bit more than an inch. The other one it goes up on the angle there. But yeah, it definitely works. But uh, yeah, it does take a while and a fair bit of stuff to spray some of these larger ones off. Got the idea that maybe with some of these bigger ones, I'll just lop them off near the ground. Uh, to get rid of the bulk of it, to stop photosynthesis occurring and basically it's going to have a pretty hard flame in summer and when it comes up next winter I'll have another go at it. But this one I wanted to try out but honestly <sighs> to get everything done in time and not spend a million dollars on poison this year and maybe sort of delay it to next year or possibly even kill it now so next year isn't even happening um, I might be getting some of the uh, green ones like this one here and uh, making a go at just chopping them near the base because oh gosh I've, I've still got a bunch out near the armors to do and I haven't even got all the ones that I'm trying to get so <laughs> you see that is Mr. Praying Mantis this is one of my Melalucas I'm warting him in the dark my headlamp on. It's not a stick insect, it's a praying mantis. What do these do? Eat the bugs. And have a go at my mouth of locust. <laughs> and he was out here the other year too. Several of them. I actually caught a few of them mating. Um, but yeah. These are one of the beneficial ones that make a deliberate point of trying to murder everything else that comes to murder my plants and uh, as a result helps save the plants and yeah there's oh gee I've spotted at least four out here at one point see now he's got his things up he's basically praying sort of thing with his little arms uh, they're pretty flaming big actually that one would be oh at least three inches long yeah anyway I'll leave him alone. Keep watering. Alrighty. So my Milwaukee jacket there. I probably should do another proper review on that now. I've used it for an entire winter. Anyway, I worked out what I'll do with all the excess wood. Little Miss has... Uh, I'm just waiting for her to call me now, actually. Has uh, moved into another rental property with her parents. Um, in an area very close to her other relatives. Cheaper rent, better house, and it turns out it's got a wood heater. So I might be giving her a whole heap of wood. Fill up the back of my car when I go up there and a few trips like that or whatever, and, yeah, they should have a good heap of wood and be able to lower their heating bill in the coming winter. Um, yeah. I also didn't mention this before, but I went down and I finished all the fencing bits down the bottom, put ones in the middle and farted around and, and you know, basically finished all the wires up. Um, then all the bits that I didn't get to and tapped down the ones that were a little bit tall and blah, blah, blah. So that's pretty much all done down there. I was going to do um, a little bit more on the other fence in that regards, but... Uh, Nah, just got flipping hot. Um, it got around oh, 86 degrees or whatever. And look, I seriously wanted a day to do something other than the fence. So I went wandering in the forest there. Um, and yeah. So anyway, it looks like we... Uh, <laughs> it's good that we've got these chains on the electric chainsaw sharpened up because it looks like we're going to be using that tomorrow 
to cut into the big area of wood that I showed before and uh, maybe lop the odd box thorn with it and even a live cypress needs a few bits trimmed off it and we're going to use a generator and extension leads and the good electric chainsaw I've got and I might try and fire up the piece of shit one I've got too and see if that's going to do anything. Sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't, but I'll use it as well um, if I can. And that's got a different sort of chain that's uh, quite good on it, even though the engine in it is just about stuffed. Uh, but the other one that I've sharpened the, or had my father sharpen the two chains for, that is a Makita, near new. It's it's flipping brilliant. Um, it's it's fantastic. Um, you know, it's a good machine. So looks like we'll be putting the still down for a while because all the shades are blunt and uh, using the electric one.